Market structure is the most important aspect of forex trading. So what is market structure? What are the rules of market structure and how can you apply it into your trading? I'm Wanjiru Gishangi from Forex Exploit Trading Academy and on this session I'll be taking you through everything to do with market structure. To the new members of the Exploit family, subscribe, click on the notification bell so that you're notified every time we have a new video and leave a comment about this video and also future videos you'd like us to add. To all our other members, we appreciate your continued support. We learn and grow together. Analysis is basically being able to look at the chart and know the direction of that market. When you talk about direction, this is the same as the trend, the bias, the order flow. All those names mean the same thing. They're only different based on the strategy that you're working with. What is market structure? This is basically being able to learn the impassive moves and the reactive moves. What are impassive moves? These are the strong moves made by the market in a certain direction. What are the reactive moves? These are the breaks or what we call the the retracements. So now when you open your chart from our last video, I talked about how to open your charts, how to customize your charts, and also the time frame. When you're doing market analysis, it's important to pay attention to the higher time frame. Best is the four-hour chart. If you're just starting out, master how to do your market analysis on the four-hour chart. But you can also do it on the one-hour chart. Especially if you're a day trader, you can use the one hour chart, the four hour chart. If you're a swing trader, this is a trader who holds a trade for longer or for longer than just one session or one day, you can always add in the daily chart or the weekly chart. If you're a long term swing trader, always pay attention to what the market is doing on the monthly chart. On this video, I'll take you through market analysis using the four hour chart and also the one hour chart. So let's say you've opened your chart and you've customized your colors and now you're on the four hour chart. So what's next? The next thing you want to do is to check if the market is either coming from a low point or a high point. Why is that important? Because we buy from the low and we sell from the high. So if the market is coming from a low, what do we do at the low? We can only buy. If the market is coming from a low, we would be expecting the market to be creating highs. If it's coming from a high point, if it's coming from a high, we would be expecting it to create lows. But when it's coming from a low, we would be expecting it to create highs. To actually draw those or mark those highs and lows. So I'll take you through a chart of the same Euro USD on four hour chart. You see the market before it got to this low, it was creating lower lows. So let's ignore this part and work from this low point. So from this low point, we want to first get the highest push to the top side. And we're going to mark it high. Then from this high, we'll have the break or the retracement giving us now a low. This is a low, yes, but it's higher than our previous low or our original low. So what are we going to call it? We're going to call it a higher low. It's a low, yes, but it's indeed higher than our previous low. So we call it a higher low. So the HL here means higher low. From this point, again, we have the highest push to the top, giving us another high. But this high is higher than the previous high. So we're going to call it a higher high. Now, make sure that when you're marking your higher highs, they're indeed higher than your previous high. And how can you do that? Especially if you're a beginner, how will you know that you're not just marking highs and higher highs that are not even meeting the, the rules of a high. You can always use your crosshair on your toolbar. There's this plus sign. Click on it. You can take it to that high and see if that point is indeed. Okay, you check the price on this end. Check if the price is higher than your previous high. Also for the lows, you can check if the high, if the low is indeed higher than your previous low. So once you do that, keep marking your highs and your higher lows until you get to the peak high. That is how to use market structure to know that the market will continue upward. In simple language, an uptrend 
we will have the market structure creating highs and higher highs. Okay, you can actually ignore the higher lows, but we're going to use them when we'll be talking about the exit and new entries. If you meet the trend has really pushed uh, some pips or if the trend is already started because it's not all the time that you start with the trend at the uh, most bottom point. No, you may find it join the market when the trend is halfway, okay, or it has pushed for a few months. So it's important to also mark your higher lows for that uh, particular reason. Now, let's say you're dealing with a downward trend. For the downward trend, this will be the movement to the bottom side. If you're liking this video so far, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment on the comment section, and share it with your trading community. Which is the easiest way to tell that you're on a selling cycle. Of course, the market will be coming from a very high price and it will be pushing down to a lower price. So even before you do anything on your chart, you can just check the prices, see if the market is pushing downward or if it's pushing upward. So if it's pushing downward, even before you mark anything on your chart, you're able to know that you're moving downward or you're on a selling cycle. So do not overcomplicate your market analysis. Simple. The first thing, check your price. Am I pushing from a higher price to a lower price? Yes, that is one tick for the down one. The second tick is, am I coming from a high point, pushing down to another low point? Yes, so that's a second tick. Number three, is my market creating low? From this high, it pushes down to this low before it takes a break. This break or reactive uh, move will give you a high, but this high is lower than the original or the first high. Therefore, we're going to call it a lower. The LH means lower high. Then gives us another impassive push downside or a very strong move, giving us another low. But now this low is lower than the first low. So we're going to call it a lower low. Then from this lower low, the market takes a reactive move or a retracement, giving us another high, which is lower than the previous one. So we'll call it a lower high. So on a downward trend, it will be giving us lower lows until now you get to the bottom part that gives you the low and now you can change the trend. Now, let's talk about how to transition. Despite the strategy, today will not be on a specific strategy, no. But when you're using your market strategy, how will you know that now we're not creating highs, we're not creating lows? What do you do? Now, you check on the break of market structure. What is break of market structure? Before we got to this low, we had this reactive move that gave us our lower high. So if you take your trend line, this diagonal line, on the other video, I explained how to customize your trend line. So click on your trend line, go to that lower high, left hold on your mouse and draw a line. When the market breaks, that lower high the market breaks that lower high it's now a sign that we are no longer in this cycle anymore now we're pushing the different aura on the opposite direction and that is why your first high always be after break of market structure because you're on the downward cycle okay? you're now pushing from downward of course you'll be moving from a high so what do you do you pick your last higher low and draw a line sorry i missed this one here you have a, a low there. Make sure that your trend line is this higher low is the one that's responsible for this high. So when it's broken, you want to get your first low once it has broken your market structure. Now, you have to be very keen with the rules. You have to be very, very keen with the rules. You cannot point this part here as a low. Why? Because it can also be the range from the top. But again, it depends with your strategy. But profitable way or the most um, certain way so that you don't make any mistake is to mark your first low after the break of the structure. So that is how to use market structure to know the trend. If you're on the down one trend, today we'll not deal on, uh, we'll not talk about the entries and all that. This is basically on market analysis, but it's important that I mention if you are on the down one trend, the market will be creating for you the lower lows. If you're on the buying cycle, which is the upward trend, the market will be creating for you the higher highs. 
So be very keen when you're working on that. Now let's talk about trend lines. Trend lines are given by this icon here. Okay, it's just lines that you draw. On the other video, I explained how to customize your trend line, but I can actually just need. So when you click on your trend line, hold on your mouse and you can draw your line on the chart. The first time you draw your line, it will overextend. So if you have this box checked, if I draw it, it extends to the farthest possible. But now if I need it to fit to the size that I want, what I have to do is right click, choose trend line properties, make sure that I uncheck this array box and check it. It's under the parameters. If I need to change the colors, I can change it from the style part. And there I have a different kind of trend line. If I need to delete it, I don't have to delete, to touch the delete button on my computer because that may delete everything that I've written. If I have a specific line that I want to delete, I just go to any of the edges, double click, right click and delete. Now, how do you use trend line to check the cycle that you're on or to do market analysis? Again, start with knowing if the market is coming from a low or a high. In this example, the market is coming from a low, we're pushing up. So I'll just click on my trend line, go to that low, pick two points, okay, and just pick two points. Two points are enough. When you talk about points, it is this candlestick, the corner of this candlestick, and these are the candlesticks, those are two points. If the market touches two points, the third point is just excess or additional uh, validation. But all you need is your trend line to touch two points. If you're on the selling cycle, Again, you're going to click on your trend line, find two points, market to touch two points, doing it, including the weeks. Remember, the weeks will include um, liquidity. That is something we'll discuss in future. But there are also people who want it to be body to body, okay, the body of the candlesticks. But whichever way you choose to draw your trend lines, you just need to make sure that the market for a selling cycle, the market will be below your trend line. For a buying cycle, the market should always be above your trend line. You only get to know that the market has changed direction if it violates. If you're on the buying cycle and the market closes below your trend line, now you should be concerned whether it's going to start giving you lows. If you're on the selling cycle and the market closes above your trend line, now you should be concerned to check if it's going to start giving you your high highs. But basically, that is how you do your trend lines. Now let's talk about the that thing, which is the channel. There are different types of channels. So when you go to your toolbar here, there are so many types of channels. And how do you add? How do you add more to? I mentioned it on the other video, but it's important I add. If you want the channels, the regressions, etc., what you do is you right click anywhere on that toolbar, click on customize, scroll down. These are the channels, so you can find whichever channel that you're looking for. Then you insert then close. Or you can actually draw one by using two trend lines. If I'm on this buy, I can also just add another color. Let me change the color to fit the buying cycle. So you can just pick two points, make sure that it's hit. It's either by tail to tail or body by body. And now you have a channel. So what you do with this channel, this kind of channel on a buying cycle is called the, the bullish channel or the upward channel. What you do with this channel is that now you can trade both ways. When you talk about trading both ways is that you can take the impassive trades and also the reactive trades. So if you're on the buying cycle, you expected to take a buy from this end of the trend line, buy, buy from here sell from the top. So at this point here, you can take the, uh, the sell trade. Once it hits again, you can take the sell trade, take the buy trade. So the channel helps you to trade both ways. I'll be very careful. Until you master your trading, you do not have to trade both ways. Focus on trading in line with the trend. It's always more profitable when you're just taking uh, the trades uh, based on the trend. Something else, inside the trend line, you can also do what we call the counter trend lines. You know, this trend line that is this extreme, we call it the passive trend line. There are two types of trend lines, by the way. There's a passive trend line that is very composed, <laughs> comes from two points, very composed, comes from two points, straight showing you the trend. Then in there, you can also draw other trend lines and you can pick this point, close this point and say this is also a trend line. This will show you the short term kind of trend. This one will give you the long 
term direction of the market. So inside the channel, you can also have other aggressive trend lines in there. So it's you to really know if you want to be trading the trend lines or the channel and also the type of trend lines that you want to be working with. For me, I usually say the passive trend lines are the best because they generally give you the direction of the market. So you do not have to really struggle thinking, should I sell, should I buy? No, once you have a, a passive trend line, that's it. All you have to do is look for the entries on your other entry time frame. When you're on the selling cycle, again, you can also draw a trend line at the top and you can also draw one at the bottom. As long as it touches two points, so there. In here, you can also do the aggressive trend lines. Okay, they'll give you the short trends, especially if you scalper, you can do the trend line in here. Anytime it's hit, you can take the sales. But if you're a long-term trader or a swing trader, you don't need to do all the aggressives, okay? The aggressive trend lines are for people who want to get in, get 50 pips, get out, get in, get 50 pips, get out. But if you want to hold the trade from a high to a low, all you need is the passive trend line and that will be enough. So that is how to use your trend lines and the channels included with the market structure. The other thing is a simple moving average. If you're liking this video so far, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment on the comment section and share it with your trading community. When you're using the simple moving average, there's so many simple moving average values that you can use. And how do you insert a simple moving average? You go to the insert indicator. Remember, it's a trend, trend kind of indicator. So you go to trend moving average. The most common one is the 20 SMA. Okay, it's the most uh, popularly used. So you get to the period is 20. The method is simple. That's why it's called an SMA. Then you apply to close. You can give it any color of your choice. You can thicken the lines if you want. Then you click OK. Once you do that, now you can see the yellow line. Now with the 20 SMA, it also works to show you the trend. If you're on a buying trend, the market will always be above your 20 SMA. Now there are instances. There are instances where the rule of the SME will be broken. You can actually just ignore them because you see they are on the reactive moves, but it will give you good entries. You can use the SME for entries. So on the trend, you can use the market structure, then use the SME for entries. How will you do that? Anytime the market crosses above the 20 SME, now it gives you uh, an entry point. So if you're a swing trader, you can keep adding positions. You can keep adding positions. At this point, you have a buy position, hold it. When the market violates the 20 SMA, get out. Wait for the a candlestick to close above the 20, get in, get some few pips. When the market closes above, you can either continue holding the positions, add more positions, or get out. You can also use it to counter trend. So when a candlestick closes below, you can take that trade. But when it closes above, now get your few pips and get on a selling cycle. On the selling cycle, the market should be below your 20 SMA, but you can use it for trade entries. Anytime a candlestick closes below your SMA, that's an entry point. If you're a swing trader, this says will show you more position or how to get into trade, but adding more positions. So you have a sell trade here. You have another sell entry. You have a third one. You have a fourth one. You have a fifth one. You have a sixth one. So that's how you can have multiple positions on one trend. You're on one trend, but you have opened so many positions. That is by use of the uh, 20 SMA. So the next one is the EME, which is the most popular EME that you know on this field. It's of course the 13 EME. And so many people call it catch up. Eh? I'm just going to again to insert indicators moving average or you can just go straight to uh, trend then the period will be 13 this time we're going to change the ma method to exponential that's why it's called a moving average is usually red that's why it's called ketchup eh? ketchup so we click ok and there we have the 13 moving average same rules applies 
like the, the 20 uh, SMA that for buy trade, the market should always be above catch up. You can also use it for trade confirmation or trade entries. When you want to get into a buy trade, make sure that the market has closed above. Be very, very, very disciplined with your entries. Do not be greedy, meaning do not get in a trade if the market has not closed above your EMA or SMA. What do I mean by that? If you just see a green candlestick, that doesn't mean that the market must close above. No, you have to really wait for that candlestick to really take its time and close above there. Okay, so be very patient. Be very patient. Don't just uh, click because you've seen a green candlestick. That should be, be very patient. On the selling cycle, again, you go to insert indicators trend, moving average, it's a 13, it's exponential, it's red, click OK. But then the selling cycle, the market will be below catch up. Again, the entries will be when the candlestick closes below catch up or the 13 EMA. Once it does that, now you're free to take a sell trade. Remember, if you're a swing trader and you have this trade from this point, every cross becomes another entry. So you can add an entry from here, another entry, an entry, an entry down here. You can also use it to counter trade. So when it crosses above, you can take a few pips. But if you're a beginner, I usually say if you're a beginner, stick with trading one cycle at a go. Just take the trend and ignore the counter trades. They are really not worth it. So that is how to use market structure. You can add your trend line to market structure just as added confirmation of the trend. You can also use the channel so that you're able to double uh, trade or you can counter trade where you trade in both ways. You can also use your SMA, most popular one, which is the 20 SMA, or you can use the 13 EMA for the same way. So I hope this video will help you to know how to do your market analysis. No, this market analysis is not based on any specific strategy. So you are just using market structure, which you find by just using your eyes, looking at the charts, but the trend lines, the channels, the EMAs, all those are indicators that are freely given by the broker. To learn more, you're most welcome to get a copy of any of my Forex. The books, you can find them on Facebook page, Forex Exploits Online Academy, or the same name on LinkedIn. Thank you for the continued support. The new members of the Exploit family, subscribe, click on the notification bell so that you're notified every time we have a new video and leave a comment about this video and also future videos you'd like us to add. To all our other members, we appreciate your continued support. Please watch the previous video because I'll be uploading them in a continuation base. So one video build to another video so if this is the first video you're seeing make sure that you go back and watch the previous video on where to get started so thank you so much this is wanjiro bishangi i appreciate you for being here i appreciate you for making me part of your trading journey thank you so much keep learning keep growing we learn and grow together